are sick of underlying causes, but there are people who even think that you may be part of the problem for underlying causes. Well, you well, know that there are people who feel that the way that you have built in New York, that you have, uh, and you're not the only one, other builders too, but you are the most celebrated builders. You are the role model builders. I looked at that audience at that Donahue show, and those women were looking at you with awe and respect. You've become a role model in this country. The reason that your book sells, the reason that your board game sells, is because people are looking to leaders. People are looking for values, and you're one of the people, and it's no, you may dismiss it, but people are talking about, you know, Donald Trump for president. What they're really talking about is, Donald Trump, show us the way. Well, Be the true White House. So, the question is, in terms of specific things, the Wallman Memorial was very nice, but north of the Wallman Memorial, into the pockets of poverty and despair in this country is where the problems are. You know your way to Kings County. Most people, if they knew that way, don't want to go there. Most people want to get out of those neighborhoods. Most people want affordable housing. Most people want chances for jobs. That's not happening in this city. Uh, it's right. not happening for a number of reasons. And you're not making either specific contributions or specific programs to make that happen. Okay, I like talking the big picture because the big picture is really what can solve the overall problem. Now, when you say, what are you doing with Japan? What are you doing with the countries? When you put a tax on Japan for the products that they're selling, you will bring in hundreds of billions of dollars to this country, which can go to rebuilding our inner cities. Instead of giving Japan free military defense, you charge them for what they're getting, and you bring in hundreds of billions of dollars that if the right person asked, they would gladly pay, because they'd have to pay. You bring in hundreds of billions of dollars which money can go toward the inner city, toward education. I am a huge believer, I'm very well educated, and I'm a huge believer in education, an unbelievable believer in education. That is a long-term solution. I wish it could be a shorter-term solution, but one of the things you need for education is money. We have a country that's losing $140 billion a year, at a minimum. I think it's much more than that, by the way, but at a minimum. It's tough to build housing for people. It's tough to educate people when you're losing 140 to 200 billion dollars a year. What I'm saying is the United States is system it's very simple what I'm saying. The United States is systematically being ripped off by many of the wealthiest countries of the world. You look at Saudi Arabia, you want to see a lifestyle? Their poor people live better than our rich people, okay? You go look at Saudi Arabia and Kuwait and various of the other oil producing countries. You'll see lifestyle because it's it's beyond belief. They, they have lifestyle because we give them their freedom and they give us nothing. I'm saying I want a piece of that. I want the money so that we can put the money into Harlem, so that we can give the money back to education. Because that's, see, that's the big picture, but that's the real picture. I'm astounded at what you're saying because in the history of this country, uh, we have never seen that kind of money, forget about trickle down, that kind of money conduited. Uh, into the inner cities, into education. Well, I think bring it, it has back. to be. Well, maybe you better be in charge of not only getting that money back and seeing that it doesn't go over there, but that it goes into the inner cities, that it goes into job programs. Is that an endorsement? That huh? We've come a long way. Is that an endorsement? Though? What do you What do you do when you're not? Where do you get your ideas from? Do you read books or I read talk a lot. to? I read a lot, and and I read a lot, but I actually uh, wish I had more time. If I had the time, I would be a very avid reader. I went to a wonderful school called the Wharton School of Finance and somehow uh, did well, and I think I did well on somewhat of a common sense basis. The world should be based more on common sense. I mean, people don't even think. When I, when I ask a question, why, as an example, why are we defending Japan for nothing? Why aren't they paying for it? Everyone says, is that true? Do we really do that? Nobody even knows about it. And then they think about it, and that's the end of it. And, and by the way, including politicians, top politicians, I ask them, Washington. I say, why are we defending Japan for nothing? They say, boy, I'll tell you what, I'm angry about it. They're angry for one day, and then they go on to something else. It amazes me. There's no stick to there's no aggressiveness, there's no advocacy. And that's really the word. Everything's a compromise today. We don't want to anger Japan, they're our friends, they're our partners, don't tax them, don't this. They're laughing at us. They think the United States is made up of a bunch of fools. They're laughing at us. Now, they don't laugh to our face because then we get insulted and then we do something about it. I will tell you, 
in closed, behind closed doors, they are laughing at the United States. They think we are the biggest fools, the dumbest people in the world. Because look at the way they're living. Look at the way we defend them. Look at the way we opened up the Persian Gulf. Most of the oil goes to Japan. We open up the Persian Gulf for Japan to get oil, for Saudi Arabia, for Kuwait to make money. Why aren't they paying us for this? And it's all common sense. And I say it, and people say, boy, he's right, he's right. And then they don't do anything about it, the politicians I'm talking about. And it angers me, because then you say, why is there poverty? Why is there no education in Harlem? Why are the schools so bad? Why is there no housing? I'll tell you what, because this country doesn't have the money to do it. Why didn't you put your money where your mouth is? In where? where? In terms of, you know, without you know, enormous government subsidies, why didn't you go out and show the way? If you had gone out and built that kind of housing, even without government subsidies, it would be very hard, wouldn't it, afterwards, for everybody else not to follow suit. Just so you understand, I've built a lot of subsidized housing. Senior citizen housing, that one beautiful housing, beautiful housing, record-setting housing. I'm a huge investor in Starrett City in Brooklyn, which is a, a job of, of middle-income and lower-middle-income people and lower-income people and senior citizens. I'm a, a, we own a big percentage of that job. We have a lot of developments out in Brooklyn that when I got out of college, I was buying Brooklyn real estate, and it's not high-income housing by any stretch. I've done a this lot. This was the pre-Manhattan Trump. This was the pre-Manhattan Trump. This was Trump. before the this, tower and this was the, the glitz pre, and the board game and the book. This was the pre-Manhattan Trump, yes. And the, the pre-full-page ad and, and the, and the pre-white hat. The problem, the public you man. see, the problem is, while I'm all for that, if uh, the pre-Manhattan Trump never became the Manhattan Trump, perhaps I wouldn't exist today economically, because you cannot economically do that. There is no money. There's no subsidy. In those days, you had Section 236, you had Section 8, you had all different housing programs you were able to build. Today, you don't have that. Nobody. So you're waiting for the government the to government, do what you feel is right. I, the government has to provide the financing for this because no individual can do it. Now, people don't like to say it. They like to say, oh, as an individual, you can build. The fact is that the numbers are so horrendous. The number, the losses are so huge that no individual can do anything meaningful in that way without government help. Now, when the government comes in and finances it, Trump will build thousands and thousands of units. How is the government going to finance it, though, when Japan is just ripping us dry, when West Germany and all of these other countries are ripping us dry, and we're losing hundreds of billions of dollars? We have to strengthen up the federal government, and the programs have to filter back into the cities. Donald, you're waiting for me, because when you talk about the government, you're talking about my tax dollars, my puny tax dollars, going to you as tax abatements or subsidies to put up low-income and middle-income housing, which I would certainly be willing to do if, if somebody was going to do it. Look at it differently. Look at it really differently. Okay. I want to tax Japan. I don't want to tax you. Mm -hmm. I want to tax West Germany. I want to tax Saudi Arabia. We keep them alive. If it weren't for us, they wouldn't even be here. They wouldn't exist. I mean, to think that Saudi Arabia would not allow us to use their minesweepers to police their own Persian Gulf is beyond me. I want to tax Saudi Arabia for the job we do in keeping them alive. They wouldn't be here for 20 minutes if we ever said, you're on your own, baby. I want to get the money from. I don't, I'm not looking to tax you, and I know you're very conscious of being taxed, obviously. But no, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm really, not looking to tax if, you. If my if my tax dollars uh, were going not to patrol those waters, but were going directly to you to build low-income housing, I'd be thrilled. I would give you the money okay. right now directly. Right. But I think there's something ingenuous what I'm saying, in building this kind of straw. What I'm saying is, these straw, no straw countries because we know that in the kind of multinational complications of the conglomerates, it's not so simple anymore. Very simple. It's so simple, you have no idea. I you don't. will tax How? Japan, you will tax West mm -hmm. Germany, you will tax their products, people are still going to buy their products, and frankly, you're going to tell people, you're going to tell the American people, hey look, they make a wonderful product, but you're going to have to pay a premium. You're going to absolutely have to pay a premium if you want to buy a Mercedes-Benz. You want to know something? West Germany won't even lose that much business, and this country will take in billions and billions of dollars. So you say to the American, look, we'd really rather have you buy an American car, but if you feel strongly that you like the West German product better, or you like the Japanese product, you're going to have to pay a tax on it. You have a choice. You can pay a tax on it. You'd be surprised at how little business they're going to lose, and you'll be amazed at how much money comes into our coffers. And you'll also be surprised at another thing. Japan and West Germany and Saudi Arabia, all these, they'll start respecting us. Because right now, they have absolutely no respect for the United States. They do not believe what they're getting away with. 
and they've gotten away with it for years. What did your friend George Bush say when you outlined this to him? I believe that George Bush and a lot of other people, and George Bush is a friend, but I believe that they just don't want to make waves. They don't want to broach the subject. They don't want to become, as I said before, advocates. They want to sort of just keep it the way it is. So what chance the do problem have? that I have with that is that I don't believe you can keep it the way it is. See, I don't believe that a country can continue to lose perhaps 200 billion a year. I really don't. Now, nobody knows what's going to happen. Who knows, really? I mean, nobody, the economists, I think it's a wasted profession as far as I'm concerned because I've never seen one that's consistently right. Mm -hmm. But nobody knows what's going to happen. But I'm, again, somebody that has a good instinct financially. I have had historically. I've followed markets. I've been going in the right direction, I, whether it's New York real estate or stocks or whatever. I know from a common sense financial standpoint that something has to burst when a country is losing billions and billions and billions of dollars a year, and when other countries are making hundreds of billions of dollars, something is going to burst, and it's going to start here. I know it. It's a question of when. To me, it's not a question if, it's a question of when. And unless we're going to solve our problem, and the problem is caused by our allies, unless we're going to solve that problem, this country is in very, very big trouble. And I'm not talking recession kind of trouble. I'm talking depression kind of trouble. And that's when we'll get smart. It's very interesting with the United States. Well, what happened to Donald Trump in a depression? Well, Donald Trump gets hurt like everybody else gets hurt. Donald Trump, uh, who knows? Uh, I have, I'm a very conservative guy. I believe in having cash as opposed to a lot of other people that don't have cash. I have wonderful properties. I have wonderful everything. Uh, Donald Trump gets hurt, everybody gets hurt, the whole country goes, well, before, essentially before the country this, goes somewhat down the tubes. Before and I'll tell you, happens, I, let me, let me yes. ask you this, this question. By the power invested me in WNET, I make you in charge. The Donald is running the show. I've come a long way with you. Would you do it? Uh, I wouldn't want to do it. I tell you what, I do not want to do it. I love what I'm doing now. I have a certain freedom. I have... Uh, I don't think anyone does it any better than I've done it. I mean, I haven't been around that long. If you really look, it's 10 years, it's 12 years. It's not a long period of time in terms of what I've been able to build. Yeah, but you have this, I, this big I total vision of the country, the United States of it. Trump. I mean, okay. would, you, would you really like to, to if, take over and run, and run the country as you have run your I would organization? Much, I would much prefer that somebody else do it. I just don't know if the somebody else is there. I don't know if we have the kind of advocate that you need. We need major surgery. This country needs major Are surgery. Are you the surgeon? I think I do a fantastic job, but I really would prefer not doing it. Uh-huh. Is, is, are you saying you will take it home if drafted? No, I'm not saying that. I'm uh -huh. saying that I hope that somebody comes along who can be an advocate. And mm -hmm. I think that somebody will be so popular. He'll but you be, haven't seen it. He anybody. or she yeah. will be the most... But uh, I don't see it now. I wish that person were there. I don't know how much longer we have. But again, I do know one thing. It's not a question. This country is losing hundreds of billions. It's not a question if, it's a question when. It is going to happen. It's going to happen drastically. It's going to be dramatic, and it's going to be horrible. And I'll tell you the other thing. This country has always reacted best under adverse conditions, whether it's wars or anything else. That's when, unfortunately, we're going to wake up. I'd like to see the country wake up long before that. Mm -hmm. An ominous prediction, but hope in the future. This is the 11th hour.